Hello, this is the concept video for the disk method for finding the volume of a three-dimensional shape. And we're gonna contrast it with the washer method. Um, my name is Nakai Rimmer, and I'm here to uh, help guide you through this journey. Today, um, in this video, we're just gonna look at what does it mean to do a question with this method? And I think we'll be able to weave in a couple examples as well. Okay, so we're talking about second semester calculus, integration applications, finding volume. The previous videos in this series were all about the method of cross sections, where we slice and we find the area of the slice and we integrate that. This is about um, something that could be also considered as slicing, but I want you to view it from the framework of uh, a volume of revolution. We're gonna take a region that's in the XY plane and revolve it. Okay. So there's going to be some region in the XY plane defined by some curves, and we're going to revolve that around some horizontal or vertical line. And based on whether or not there is a gap between the region and the axis, we'll then tell you which method you'll use, disk or washer. So I'm just going to talk about disk, but I want to bring up washer in this very beginning to draw the contrast. Okay, if there is no gap between your region and your axis then what you're doing is called the disk method. And so these are static drawings. It's better if you see an animation, but basically I have this region in the XY plane. I'm revolving around the X axis. And what I'm getting is a, it's called a paraboloid, the shape that comes out of it. And I want to find the volume of that shape. When I do that, what I'll have is a solid disk for my slice, okay? This doesn't really do it justice. There's a there's a nice uh, website that I need you to go to and check out the animations. It's much better than my static drawings. And so uh, there's that um, that web page. Hopefully you can copy it and um, throw it right into a web browser and, and watch some of the animations there. They're phenomenal. If visualization is your, is your key to help you do the calculation. All right, now what if there is a gap between the region and the axis. Right there, there is no gap. The region is flush up against the axis. What if there is a gap though? When there is a gap, then you have to use a whole different method. Well, not really a different method. Honestly, it's the same method. It's like basically doing an outside disk and subtracting out an inside disk. That's what's going on. Okay, here's an example of that. We have some, we're gonna do this question uh, later in a, in a subsequent video um, where we have some region in yellow there in the XY plane. This time, instead of being revolved around the X axis, is revolved around some other line that's horizontal. And so it's revolved around the line y equals negative two. There's a discernible gap between the region and the axis. Because of that gap then, when you go to rotate, there will be a hole in your three-dimensional shape. And so you have to account for that. There'll be two different radii. Honestly, you're gonna find the outside disk and subtract out the inside disk. Okay, but this video isn't about that. I wanted to draw the contrast. There's some definite, uh, you know, animations for you to watch there. I think that's the right link. It looks different than the previous link, but I think it'd be fine. All right, now let's dig into disk method. Uh, why the formula is what it is, and let's work some examples. I think we might actually do this particular example that's on the slide here. Okay, all right, great. So when your axis of rotation is horizontal, like the x-axis, but not necessarily the x-axis, what happens then, is when you slice perpendicular to that axis, what happens then is that your cross sections are gonna be circles, okay? And so, just like in the previous section, the area of a cross section is what you integrate because in disk method, you're doing both revolution and um, slicing at the same time. So it's just pi r squared. But r won't be a constant. R is gonna change as you move throughout the shape. You're going to start at some low x equals a, move to some higher x equals b, so there'll be some bounds you have to find, but honestly, it's just pi r squared, the entire area of the disk. And so, you have to be able to find the formula for the radius, depending on where your x is. Smaller x might have a smaller radius, bigger x might have a bigger radius, or vice versa. Um, in that example that we had on a previous slide, the smaller x has a very small radius, but as you move between uh, zero and one, then the radius increases. 
We're revolving around the x-axis, slicing perpendicular to the x-axis. Okay. And when we make this slice perpendicular and rotate that, we'll have a solid disk. Very thin thickness to it, but it'll be a disk. So what's the radius there? What's the height? It's the distance up to the function. It's just root x. This used to be an animation, but I don't think it's an animation now. This is the, uh, the static approximation where we have uh, six different disks. And uh, the thickness is taking the, the entire 0 to 1 and cutting it to six pieces, delta x. And then that's the picture, the smoother picture. When you let the number of them go to infinity, then we get not an approximation. We'll get an exact answer. Okay. All right, let's go do this calculation. <clears throat> so your curves are y equals root x, uh, x equals 1, and uh, the x-axis. And we're going to rotate about the x-axis. Okay. What the formula says, you just have to find the radius. But we have it. The radius is the distance up to the function. The distance off the y-axis up to the function. It's y equals root x. So you plug it into the formula, which is pi r squared. So take, take root x and square it. Multiply by pi. That's what you integrate. As x starts at 0 and x ends at 1. I don't think there's going to be a simpler integral all semester. <laughs> OK, so pause the video, but I don't know, in two seconds you'll be able to get it. Mentally, you can do this mentally. You don't need to do it, but answer is pi over 2. OK, I'll call it example 5 because the previous four examples were, were um, in, in subsequent videos. Let's see, do we have time? Let's see, let's try to uh, do another. Let's now take the axis who was a horizontal line, and now let's make the axis a vertical line. Why not? It doesn't have to necessarily be the y-axis. That's what we usually use. But it could be something like x equals 7. OK? And so our cross-sections are going to be circular still. But because we're slicing perpendicular to your axis, then the slices are going to be horizontal slices, and y is going to be changing. So we'll need formulas based on y now. But it still doesn't change the fact that it's just going to be pi r squared. And you're going to be integrating that. But it's just going to be with respect to y now. Slicing perpendicular to the vertical line, which is the axis of rotation. You start at some low y. You have some high y. Here's a picture for an, for an example that we'll do next. OK, uh, you're in the first quadrant. You're between um, these curves. And you slice perpendicular. You're, you're rotating about the y-axis. Slicing perpendicular to that y-axis. You get the same kind of shape, okay? Looking, same looking shape, all right? But the curve is different this time. It's y equals x cubed. And because it's solved y equals a function of x, you got to solve it as x is a function of y. So just cube, cube root both sides. And here's the, the actual three-dimensional shape there. So when your slices are horizontal, then y is changing. It's when your slices are vertical that x is changing. And that's going to be a common theme throughout. OK, all right, on the next slide, let's go ahead and do this calculation. Pretty much just as straightforward as the other one. You need that distance because that distance is the radius. OK, it's the distance off the y-axis. OK, and so. But that's just the x equals distance off the y. The distance off the y-axis is called x. OK, so you solve it. You cube root both sides. And so you give me a y value. I take the cube root of that, and I will have the distance for the radius. OK, when y is 1, the radius is 1. OK, um, when y is 5, the radius is the cube root of 5, and so on. It changes as y changes from 0 um, up to 8. It's the highest possible y, y equals 8. So you're ready to go to the formula, which is supposed to be pi times that radius squared. So we have um, cube root of y, OK, and we square it. 
Now watch your exponents, okay? Y is to the one third for the cube root. And when you square it, you multiply those exponents, one third and two. So it's two thirds, but straightforward integral. Nice bounds for us, zero and eight. We can integrate that power rule in reverse, okay? And just remember that we're, you know, this is, this is slicing. So we're just finding that formula and we're integrating that formula. Okay. Add one, five. You can, you can integrate this. I'm not going to go through the integration. You got this. Okay. And so uh, pause it if you need to. Don't look at these steps. But anyway, the answer to the question is 96 pi over 5. All right. Um, oh, we're past 10 minutes. Let's go ahead and stop this video. In the next video, we'll do a couple more examples. And then we'll switch over and talk about the other two methods, washer and then later shell. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. And um, yeah, comment down below, like, and subscribe.